about three or four months ago, I picked up this Rupees Polisher um, LHR12E. Um, that comes as standard with a, a five inch backing plate. Um, and this is the, the pad that, uh, you know, that, that fits that. It might be five inches there, but by the time you're looking at the face there, you're, uh, you're six inches. Um, what that basically means is if, if you've got any um, small areas of the car, of the panels, um, you know, it can be it can be a little bit difficult to to get in there um, with the with the pad. Um, you might find it stalling a little bit. It's, it's actually pretty good um, for for not stalling, but it, it does um, like most dual action polishers uh, stall a little bit. Um, one option was to pick up the smaller rupees machine, uh, the seventy five, um, but I didn't particularly want to do that because it's not something I'm going to use a lot of. Um, and it's, I don't know, 230, 240 pounds, something like that. Um, so what I decided to do was have a crack at making a, a backing plate that would allow me to use the pads off the um, LHR 75, the smaller one. Um, that, was, that was the plan. I have recently bought a 3D printer, um, so I thought I'd have a crack at making one um a backing plate for this on on there and this is the sort of history of the the part as such this was just basically your proof of concept um you see with the the very curved side there and it's on there like that um one a couple of the d designs um that i was keen to include on this is uh, you may have heard of the um the washer mod um, which some people do with these, and it involves um, just putting a cutting a washer to fit, just so that this will not catch on this little rubber skirt. Um, there, it just it reduces a, a bit of the drag off the off the pad when it's in in use. So, what I wanted to do is incorporate that into uh, into the design. So when this was was spinning it wasn't catching on this uh this skirt i wanted it to be close to keep any dust and rubbish out but uh just as close as possible without actually touching so that was one of the design criteria uh and obviously the other thing um obviously if you're going to be using a small pad like that and, and just come straight down you're going to have a gap all around the the edge where uh, polishing dust and all sorts of gubbins can go in into that little area there so I wanted the um, the backing plate to actually cover to cover that so these are a few of the early uh, iterations if you will um, quickly found out that these backing plates need to be the same weight as the original uh, rupees one um, this this counterweight here um, is is balanced to this pad um, so with those in balance you don't get any vibration um, so as you can see whereas this was quite thin I was trying to increase it to get um, to, to get the weight up the other thing is that these uh, these parts are not solid um, they are strong, but they're not solid. The inside, if you've ever seen a, the inside of a 3D print, um, it's almost like a, a honeycomb structure, which you can change the, the different uh, the different types. This was um, one I was cut in half to, to have a look. Now this was, I think, about 25% infill, which basically means it's 25% solid or 75% air inside, basically. Um, but it still wasn't giving me the, the the weight I wanted, so I thought, sorry, I'll increase the the infill to 100% so that it's absolutely solid, um, and that obviously increases the uh, the strength and the durability of, of the part as well. Um, so this is where we're we're up to. This is this is completely solid part. Um, I will show you the strength of of, of these in in a moment, but. Um, yeah, this this is effectively exactly the same weight. This is about 130 grams. I think this is about 132 or something like that. Um, so it's it's pretty much banged on. Obviously, the 
uh, the larger pad is a fraction heavier than, um, than than the smaller pad, but it's it's certainly nothing to worry about, and you don't get any vibration, so there's no problem on that score. Um, so quickly show you. See that's sitting on that little boss there, and then I'll just tighten that up. So as you can see, we're covering the the little rubber skirt there, and there's no drag. I think it might ever so slightly just be. Uh, just just kissing it in one particular point the uh, the skirt there but there's there's no drag on that i have tried this um on, on the car i'll show you a, a, a bit of a demo in a moment but uh, that's that's what we've got and obviously your pad your pad on there so just to give So you'll see that spin on for a moment, whereas whereas normally you would be stopping pretty pretty fast on that on that skirt. So you're um, you're getting the, the most amount of sort of power out of this without it, it, it being stopping on that uh, on that skirt. Um, so the other thing to to note, obviously, if you you know if your machine was turning a pad this size and now it's turning a pad this size, you know. I don't know what the percentage is. Probably, probably half the um, half the surface area, or something like that. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but you know the machine has still got the same amount of torque, but it's over a smaller a smaller pad. So what you're going to find is that um, you you won't get any any bogging down. You won't get any stalling, or at least not not as much anyway. That'll be greatly re reduced. Um, so there's no problem uh, with that. What I am going to do. Um, just on the, uh, the the sort of back face there, I am going to make a little um, a, a tiny a tiny hole and just put some uh, some white paint or some white filler in there or something, just so that if there is any stalling, you'll be able to see that from from the top and it's a visual indicator basically. Okay, so like I said, this is a solid infill, um, and if you're not familiar with three D printers, the way that they um, create objects basically they will take a, a filament a plastic filament uh, it's 1.75 millimeters diameter it will take that and it will feed it through a heated nozzle which will extrude or lay down that uh, molten plastic into uh, various shapes and it does it by layer so what I've decided to do is use a a thicker nozzle than standard which is 0.6 millimeters which gives you the ability to print slightly thicker layers which serves two purposes one it's stronger and two it allows you to make the part faster and um, these parts take around about eight and a half hours to, to print so um, any time saving there is uh, is is welcome so the material this is made of is um, PETG which is basically the same as what your plastic drinks bottles are made of. The One of the downsides with using that particular material is it is pretty finicky to print with. Um, it does require a lot of tweaking and, and what have you but it and, and it does take a lot longer to print. It's a much much uh, more difficult and it's, it's a slower uh, fab uh, slower material to, to work with so like I said these take about eight and a half hours if you were printing it in um, like a standard PLA or something like that you'd probably do it in I don't know, three hours something like that but this is this is a tough material it's got a tough job to do so we want uh, we want something strong that's going to do the job the other thing is it's it's much more heat stable than the sort of standard uh, plastics there but just to give you some idea um, I'll give a bit of a hammer test So you're not going to find that thing uh, breaking unless you're doing something something wrong. I would suggest there. But uh, so that's where we're up to at the minute. Uh